Hi, everybody. How's it going? Good. I heard some of you were just over on the east side. Sounds, sounds like you took a nice detour. Uh, but you're here now, and that's what's important. Uh, so I'm going to, we're starting now instead of starting soon. We're going to get started. Uh, welcome to the Accepted Students Day 2024. I'm sure you were welcomed over at the piers. Uh, but now, this is specifically my welcome to you to the 3D Animation and Visual Effects Department's presentation for today. Um, I just want to give you a brief history of our department. I'm doing this for a couple reasons. Uh, so this year is the first year that our department's name is 3D Animation and Visual Effects. Before that, we were called Computer Art, Computer Animation and Visual Effects. And I want you to know that because we have 30 years of history with that name. And, uh, we're proud of it and we're proud of that history. So if you see films and uh, content from our alumni and it says that they are alumni of the computer art program, that's, that's us and I want you to know that. And I also want you to know that because I might accidentally say computer art today a few times, so forgive me and know that I'm talking about 3D animation and visual effects. Um, now that I've talked a lot, I should introduce myself. Maybe I should have done that first. Uh, so my name is Jimmy Calhoun, I'm the chair of the program. Uh, and there's my contact information. You're welcome to reach out to me. It is a busy, hectic, crazy time of year, but I will respond to you uh, as I can if you have questions. But hopefully we answer most of those questions today, and, uh, and then I can answer questions to you in the future when you join us. Uh, so my job as the chair is to um, co coordinate, but also to cultivate a community, and that community is our students, it's our alumni. Uh, as you were walking into the theater, you saw our alumni reel playing, and you see that, you know, we reach, like I said, we reach back 30 years, and we have a lot of alumni who work in the industry, both in New York and worldwide, and a lot of faculty uh, as well, and those faculty are working professionals, and we'll talk more about that. And our students, our students are a big part of that community. And congratulations to you all on being accepted into that community. And I uh, hope you choose to join us next year. So today I want to tell you a little bit about what that would look like. And we'll focus mostly on your first year studies. Uh, but over the four years with us, this is kind of what you can expect. So at the end of four years, you'll have a BFA degree in, in 3D animation and visual effects. And that degree is comprised of 120 credits. And that's mostly primarily studio art classes that uh, are in a various uh, amount of software and skills that focus on the 3D and visual effects pipeline. You'll also take credits in humanities and sciences. Uh, those at SVA, those are really interesting classes. They often uh, the instructors often relate them back to you as artists, uh, but also as well-rounded humans and citizens, and uh, those classes are a great way to continue to build yourselves. Um, then you'll have 15 credits of art history, which includes history of animation and history of film. Uh, three miscellaneous credits, which students usually use on more studio art classes. And then at the end, you have a Bachelor of Fine Arts. Um, our curriculum is very production-based. Uh, so we have storytelling, concept art, 3D animation, uh, modeling, rigging, lighting. We've got texturing, compositing, all the things that go into creating a film or commercials su such as w the work that you were seeing before from our alumni and some of the work I'll show you today. Uh, but in that first year, next year, when you join us, uh, we really start building your foundational skills. Uh, so this is a list of the courses that you'll take next fall and spring with us. Uh, we begin with skills in, in Photoshop and Illustrator, uh, because it, those are very important basic skills that you need as you build into um, bigger topics and larger software packages. Uh, and also in the first year, you'll have classes with After Effects. And we begin right away with Maya, which is our primary 3D animation package. Some of you have probably experimented with Blender. Uh, that's great. I think uh, the, the skills translate. We focus on, on Maya because that is the, the New York uh, commercial industry's uh, main tool. And 
it also reflects a lot of what the industry uses. A lot of studios have their own propri proprietary tools, but Maya is a good reflection of that and used by a lot of studios. Um, and all of these are also sharpening your skills as a visual artist. We're not just software focused. We want to focus on your ability to think visually and translate your ideas and thoughts to pen and paper as well as the computer screen. Uh, and I'm going to show you some examples of work that have been created in the first year. So these are some examples from the first semester in the freshman year uh, when students are building on their skills, uh, their digital skills to create images while exploring visual storytelling. So here students are trying to think about storytelling and how do you do that uh, in one image. Uh, we also start helping you uh, learn how to manipulate photography, uh, still images before we get into moving images. Again, compositing is a big part of what we do. Um, and also learning about color and composition and how that relates to visually communicating and telling stories and setting moods. Um, storytelling is a big part of what we do. So our students learn about character building, uh, how to develop characters, how those characters affect the stories that they tell, um, and obviously creating storyboards uh, from your stories is the next step into visual storytelling. Um, here's a video that was made in the second semester of the first year. This is when students begin to learn about digital video and how to edit that. That video is a, is a little old. That student, she made that in her first year. She's graduating this year. Uh, I haven't updated it because I just love it. I think she did such a great job with it. Uh, but th this next one is new. This is from this year's uh, freshman class. Um, in, the, in the first year of Maya class, you start learning to make 3D assets. Uh, and so this was completely created by a first year student from the basic model all the way through the lighting and shading. And then students also learn to take those assets and bring motion and animation to them. So in this example, uh, the student was given a model ahead of time, a rig that was already created, and they're learning how to bring their own animation to that. So that gives you a good example of you know a lot of, a lot of the work that's done in the first year, and then you have your next three years. So uh, we take all of that as an introduction, uh, again your foundation, and you start building upon it. And so over the next three years, students start to focus in. Well, I shouldn't say focus in. So in the in the second year, we're still building a holistic approach. You're still having to learn the full pipeline, and we'll talk about the pipeline in a second. Uh, of both 3D animation and visual effects and compositing. And then after the second year, students can then start focusing in on the things that uh, they are most interested in or continue learning uh, a broader spectrum if that's what they want to do as well. And some of those topics that students uh, can focus on are animation. Uh, visual effects is kind of a big word, but we're talking about effects animation, we're talking about uh, compositing 2D and 3D live action and CG assets together. Uh, we have sound design courses. All of our students have to take Python scripting. It's the only scripting class we'll make you take, uh, but it is good and important for you to take it. Um, again, we, we have history of animation and history of film. Our students have opportunities to learn about procedural art. Uh, we have courses in virtual reality design, game design, uh, character effects, digital sculpting, um, and then all of the things that go into lighting and uh, creating the final look development of CG props, of, of CG work. 
So when you were walked in, for those of you here with us, sorry if you're online, uh, for those of you that walked in, we, we handed you a brochure, and this brochure uh, is a breakdown of the pipeline that our students uh, can refer to as they're working on projects. This is the workflow that we teach. Uh, so it says animation pipeline at the top, uh, but all of this is relevant to the visual effects workflow as well, just with the addition of perhaps filming some live action plates um, and working with actors and that sort of thing. Um, but it's all relevant to the industries that our students will find themselves working in, uh, which can include things like medical visualization and interactive media and architecture. I know a lot of our students are very focused, though, on uh, feature animation or television, um, and this is all very relevant to that as well. Um, the second section of that pipeline is really where our students put most of their focus and energy. This is the uh, largest bulk of what our curriculum is based on. And then the last part of it as well. Um, so you can kind of get an idea from, from that. I know there's a lot there, and if you're not very familiar with the process, uh, hopefully this helps give you a better idea and understanding of all the work that goes into making those final images that we see on the screen. And all of that work that our students are doing is being done at our facility, which you'll have a chance to go uh, visit after we're done here. In that facility, you'll find uh, nine computer classrooms, as well as free time labs, uh, production studios, which include uh, sound recording capabilities, motion capture, a green screen and a color grading suite. Uh, and here's some photos of what that looks like if you're not able to come visit with us. In addition to the facilities themselves, we also have a lot of equipment that students can use and check out from us. We have a lot of cameras, with most of our camera focus being on Nikon and Blackmagic, and students are taught how to use those um, beginning in the first semester of your first year. And on the seventh floor, which you won't see today, we're on the second and third floors of, of our building, but on the seventh floor, there's a data center. And in that data center, we have uh, our own um, render farm. And so that's a picture of it. And you'll never see it in real life because we, we protect it and we keep it clean and uh, keep all the dust out. So you'll, you won't see it, but there's your chance. <laughs> Uh, and helping you all with the work that you're doing is our faculty. So we have over 70 adjunct faculty members. Uh, they're all working professionals, active in the industry. Uh, we, again, we're based in New York, so most of our faculty are working in commercial advertising uh, in that type of space. Uh, but also a lot of television production happens here, a lot of visual effects for uh, series projects are, are happening in New York. We have one last class that we've left online, that's our character effects course, and that's because the instructor, uh, it's taught by two instructors, uh, and one of them works on the West Coast, so she, uh, we've left that class online because she's such a great asset to us, and students really, really enjoy working with her, but we're really glad to be back in person. We're glad to have our students and our instructors back in, in, in the brick and mortar, um, in the space that we have, and it's just so nice. It's so nice to like see people and to have moments of interactivity with them. Uh, so that's our faculty, but we also have our students, and that's obviously uh, the biggest group of our uh, of our of our group. What's the, what's another word for group? Uh, <laughs> Community, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the biggest portion of our community is our students. We have over 300 students. They're from all around the world. Uh, and they are very active in creating a space that's welcoming to each other. We have some student-led clubs, uh, both within our own department and across campus. So Women in Animation is a club that's made up of students from multiple departments at SVA. There's other clubs uh, that I didn't list that, again, are made up of all the students at SVA. The other three clubs listed here are Modeling Club, our uh, Visual Effects Club, and MARS are, are built within our department. So those are clubs that are only 3D animation and visual effects students. 
The Mars Mentoring Advice Relationship Services Club is a really great chance for students uh, in the first and second year to be mentored by third and fourth year students. And then your third and fourth year, it's a great opportunity to give back and start learning what it's like to mentor and, and lead others. So that's one of our clubs that I'm most proud of, but I'm, I'm proud of all of them. Uh, and other ways uh, to be active beyond the classroom, we have opportunities for students to visit studios. We have a lot of studios who come and visit us, uh, places from within New York, but also outside of New York. Uh, we have SVA destinations programs that take students to LA or the Annecy Film Festival in France um, and other opportunities like that. Our after school special brings alumni here every uh, September to this theater uh, where we screen feature films and projects that our alumni worked on and then we have panel discussions with them where students get to learn about their work in the industry and what it what went into making the films that we show. And the films that our students make are thesis films we send out around the world as well. So those films get screened at different festivals um, and win awards such as the Student Academy Award and the College Television Award, which is the Student Emmy. And then we also have students who uh, have opportunities to work at internships, often in the summer. Uh, they, they'll leave New York and go uh, to different studios and have those internship opportunities. And it's great because then they come back and the things that they learned, they, they feed back into their peers. Uh, so that's one of the best parts about having students that intern is that it's not just, they get that experience and they get that education and it's great, but then they bring it back to their friends as well. So that's a great way to see uh, it being paid forward. Um, our alumni are an important part of our community. They do come back often and talk to our students and uh, they also help us by assessing our students' work. So in not, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday, we have our this year's thesis presentations in the, in the theater. And we have industry professionals and alumni who are going to come and they're going to assess the work, give us feedback on it. Um, and that's super helpful to us. And we also continue to learn from them as they're growing in the industry what it is that we can continue to do to evolve our curriculum and prepare our students for working in the in, in the world beyond us. Uh, those alumni work at a lot of different studios uh, and, and I think that's great and I think that's important but we also have alumni who go on and do other things that are more independent of that and I think that there's always emerging technologies and, and opportunities that uh, we're going to be surprised in five years to see what our alumni are doing. Uh, so I'm excited to, to continue to grow this list and see how else it changes. I've talked a lot. I've talked enough. I'm actually going to pivot this conversation and we're going to bring some of our current students up to talk to you. Uh, so we have, we actually have five students. There's four uh, student panelists, uh, Samuel, Lucy, Michael, and Cam, uh, who our senior graduating soon student, Michelle, is going to moderate a conversation with. So you all can come on up. While they're coming up, I'm going to show you some of Lucy's work. Lucy Lee, uh, I have her reel, and we'll show you that while they're getting ready.
<laughs> I'm just gonna say real fast. Lucy just found out she's spending the summer at Pixar uh, this summer. She got an internship. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, I'm gonna let you take it away, Michelle. Please welcome our students. Yay. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Welcome to Acceptance Students Day. First of all, congratulations. You got it. Woo! Yay. Um, so. This is a wonderful day for you guys to get to know the department, get to know the students here. So let's get to know you guys. So let's introduce yourselves, names, pronouns. What year are you in school? And we'll start with that. OK, hi, my name is Cam. I'm currently a freshman, upcoming sophomore. Um, my pronouns are she, they. Hi, I'm Samuel. I am a current junior, rising senior. And uh, my pronouns are he, him. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lucy. I am also a rising senior. And nice to meet you guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, hi, I'm Michael. I'm a uh, junior or a rising senior. Uh, and uh, my pronouns are he, him. Hi, I'm Michelle. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a senior. Um, so is there any clubs that you guys are involved in or any school jobs or just anything that you'd like to know? Like, where are you guys from? Okay, I'll go first. Um, I'm currently in the Mars program. I am a mentee and I have a senior as my mentor. It's been a really helpful club for me and everything. And it's really helped me improve all my modeling and just 3D skills in general. Um, any other clubs I'm in, it's kind of, they're kind of nerdy. I'm in a D&D &D club. And yeah, well, yeah, just, just it's okay, it's okay. Um, I am personally involved in the SVA Mars Club as a animation mentor. I specialize in animation, so I'm able to pass that down to a couple people. Uh, I also work as a lab assistant, so I am constantly around the labs and more than willing to help out anyone with anything. Uh, and on top of that, I help out with the department social media. Uh, I am a part of the honors program at SVA. Uh, I also, like Sam, am a mentor um, to two freshmen. I specialize in texturing and modeling, so I also have passed down all of the things I've learned over the years in school um, to help them out. I also am a lab assistant at our, at our department uh, where we like rent out equipment to students, help out uh, students with any questions, problems they have with homework or uh, the softwares they're using. So yeah, those are the things I'm a part of. Uh, similar to Lucy, Sam, and Michelle, uh, I'm also a lab assistant. Uh, and I recommend anyone, uh, when the opportunity arises, you should apply for the job because it's a very good position. And you get to meet a lot of people and uh, get to really like take part in the community. I'm also a lab assistant. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also part of the Mars Mentorship Club. I take, I have three mentees. Uh, one of them is a sophomore, two of them are freshmen. Um, I'm also part of the Women in Animation Club, which I highly recommend because you get a membership and I've been able to take on a lot of opportunities and support from that club that has supported me tremendously at my time here. But it's great, you should definitely join. So, what is your favorite class or project that you have done at school so far? Okay, so this year, um, I'm currently, we're in our spring semester, uh, we had a project, a really large group project, which was the first one we had, um, and it was called Johnny Box. And <laughs> I came into the project, one of my best projects so far, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Um, I think in terms of my favorite class, I get very easily stuck between my animation class and my stop motion animation class, because animation is everything to me. Um, but probably my stop motion class is gonna have to take the number one spot because it made my favorite project. I am currently still in the process of finishing up a short film about a woodsman who finds a broken light bulb and uses it as a home for new fireflies. So that's currently in production. Hopefully we'll be out by the end of the year. We'll see. Uh, one of my favorite classes has to be with a professor who used to work at Pixar. And uh, she taught, you know, she teaches class on like modeling and set dressing uh, environments. So uh, her working on, at Pixar on many different amazing films, she 
uh, not only taught great skills, technical skills, she also told us a lot about the workplace, um, what, how she got to Pixar, the, the environment that she uh, was working at. So not only the technical skills, but also the real life uh, exposure that she passed down to us really um, helped us, or helped me, and uh, really enjoyed her class a lot and learned a lot. Uh, similar to Sam, one of my favorite classes has to be uh, our animation class, which was really great to uh, kind of like hone in on a singular, like, I guess, part of the pipeline. Uh, I mean, we did like a lot of lip syncing and a lot of like body dynamics, uh, kind of like exercises. And also um, my imagery class that is taught by a, an alumni from a long time ago, uh, Alex Sheparov, who is like, uh, a well of information. Uh, it's really like insane how much he knows about like pretty much everything involving the pipeline. Uh, and I've learned a lot this year from him specifically that I'm definitely gonna like use in a lot of things I do in the future. I think, well, <laughs> my favorite project will have to be thesis. I worked on it for two years. <laughs> um, and I loved it because it was my opportunity to tell a story. I always wanted to tell a story about where I was from. I wanted to tell an Indonesian film. So um, that is my favorite project. Um, I think kind of tying that in with my favorite class, my thesis class is my favorite because I really loved my professor, Harry Dorrington. I feel like he was a teacher who really treated you like an artist as if you were in the industry. He never called our thesis film a thesis. He always called it a film. And that's how he treated it. He treated it like, tell me about your film. And I really loved that he treated our work in that way. And he always like took you so seriously and like really considered you. I love that he, if you ask him, like, what is your favorite film? He cannot remember any of the titles <laughs> of the films, but he can remember exactly the name of the students who worked on that film, and he can remember every single seat in that class and what students sat there last year, what students sat there two years before, because he really just valued the person who was making the film and who they were as people, so I really loved him. <laughs> okay, so what are your tips for being a successful student at this department? time management and definitely talking to your peers. One thing that you're gonna like realize is that a lot of times you get a lot of work. You get a lot of work a lot of, for a lot of you guys. It's like your first time being in college, I'm guessing. And it's a lot. Uh, you just wanna make sure that you're setting aside time for yourself and also your work. So you can also get some free time to just kinda like debrief after everything. But not only that, you want to make sure you're talking to your peers. Your peers are another well of information that you're going to get like just so much information from. Like a lot of the times, if I ever struggle on like maybe an animation or getting something, just getting something right, I just turn to one of my friends in class and just like, dang, I didn't get a single thing that was being said. Could you like help me out? And a lot of times we hang out after class, they teach me what they know, and I teach them what they know, or well, what I'm going to teach them. And I don't know, it's like a cycle of information, and it's really great. I love the community here. Um, I mean, basically what you said, but definitely adding on, like, talk to the upperclassmen. We want to be talked to. I know sometimes we might seem a little stressed around the labs, but that's, that's just the major. Everyone wants to talk to one another. Some people will struggle, you know, making that bridge and getting over that first interaction, but we are all here to help each other as a community. We all want to see each other succeed and grow and learn. So talk to people, be around people, get involved with those clubs. Everyone is more than willing to help. If they're not your mentor, still talk to them. They're gonna help you out. Yeah, there are uh, two major things that I would like to say. Number one, have a close relationship with professors. You have no idea how much help you receive from them. Try to talk to them in and outside of classrooms and build actual genuine relationships with them and prioritize that. Um, Christina Faraj, who I mentioned just now, uh, my professor who used to work at Pixar, she was one of the uh, pivotal figure who helped me get my internship at Pixar. Um, and, but aside from her, I got to, I prioritized my having a relationship with professors and had lunch with them outside of classrooms and asked them questions and 
I got just so much guidance and feedback and critique from them um, by having a close uh, relationship with them. So yeah, that's important. And number two, like uh, Sam and May, oh, Kay, <laughs> Kim, Kim, sorry, <laughs> has, uh, have already mentioned, take advantage of your peers, uh, the clubs, the mentorship programs. Um, if you can, like Michael said, get the lab assistant job uh, at our department. Really get involved and learn from those around you because you can't be, you can't make a good film alone just by yourself. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, definitely take care of yourself too. Like sleep when you, if you like have to, if you're tired and you're like working on homework at like three in the morning, um, you're just not gonna make something good if you're like a zombie working on it. So uh, definitely take your physical health into account uh, when you're like on your later part of work, kind of just like grinding. Um, Cause you will get there. I don't want to scare anyone, but it's going to be a point when you're, when you're there just working like very late and you're like, oh God. Um, and also know that everyone is as like confused and scared as you are. Like about everything, so like um, you could just talk to people, and they'll they'll understand what you're going through. So definitely talk to people uh, around you and in the labs and your peers, because that's where, I mean, you're you're in college, so that's like definitely one of the biggest, um, I guess, like upsides of this is that everyone is here doing the same thing as you are, and they understand what you're going through. So just take advantage of that. I think. Maybe cheesy. I think like <laughs> uh, just like remaining kind, and by kind I mean like not just, of course, to other people, but also just being kind to yourself. I think you're gonna have many points where you're gonna really struggle, and you're gonna really feel down, and you're gonna feel like maybe you don't belong. But I think you have to extend that kindness and remember kind of where you started like at some point like you guys were here I remember Cam was in that seat like <laughs> in like a year ago and now she's on the stage so it's like you've come so far also like being kind to other people too like form genuine connections with your peers and the people around you like share bonds share memories because those people around you are going to be the ones who you end up working with who will stick with you maybe not even beyond your career but also for your life so i'd say that but thank you guys i think now we can open it up to questions in the audience There's some men. <laughs> okay we can go right here <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so here's my question to you guys. I ever wondered, I have been researching 3D animation and visual effects, but here's what I come to mind personally. I'm kind of afraid that the 3D animation, some of it can be a little bit cringe because I saw something that I don't like. AI generated movie posters or something like that. They're used for memes. Pfft, what's up with these stupid people? <laughs> can you at least explain why, how, how can I, I make it better than this? It's like, don't you even remember how, don't you guys even remember the conversation, Ember, the, the challenges they face on Pixar or Disney? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember the challenges they have totally face suffering from it from Disney and Pixar? I see some videos that are uh, some movies are not that great. Can you explain about this? I'm not going to get into too much detail about it, but. Um, in one of my classes, there was an incident uh, with someone using AI for like certain things, uh, and the uh, our professors are are their stance on AI is like you have to let them know, and some of them won't be okay with it, but some of them are okay with it, and they like have a very specific like guideline set in that you have to let them know that you're using AI, and they have to be okay with it, and like and you can't just use that as your project you have to like use it um, I guess in a way to like um, 
I don't know. Uh, like, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you have to, like, yeah, pretty much like a basis of your work uh, and then, like, build upon it. Um, but, there, and if you are using it without letting them know, like, there, that is an issue and that did happen to someone that it was in one of my classes. But uh, we, there is a strict, like, got, like, policy, I guess, for AI uh, here. Yeah, I feel like a lot of professors like prefer just seeing original work. Mm -hmm. And like, even if you're not completely confident of like what your work is at, at least you did it. At least every time you do something, even if you don't like it personally, if you put your heart out and you put your like true effort into that work, that's what really matters in the end to the professors. Like, just make the art that you wanna make. Like it might be a bit cheesy to say, and you you'll probably hear this a couple times throughout your career, but you have to do what's best for you, and you have to pay attention to what you are doing and how you can execute it best, and be genuine with the things that you like, enjoy, and want out of not just your animation, but the career that you're going to have in general. AI is an intimidating thing to have kind of facing us in the industry, but we as artists are adaptable and we can learn how to use it to our best advantage to make it into something that we can build off of and we can build with, instead of it being something that people are gonna try and use against us. Um, how is midterms and finals for you? Well, I'm a freshman, <laughs> so like I have definitely had some midterms, uh, especially for like the drawing class that you had to take, of course. Um, but at least in my freshman year, the midterms are mostly in just the finals is just working on like a bigger piece, which would take maybe instead of just being one week, it take two or three weeks to get it done. Like during my first semester, my midterm was doing like a diorama. So we made a, like a robot model and then afterwards we would make an entire environment around it. And then we kind of did a turntable of it. That was like a really big thing for us and we were really excited about, about that. And the final that I'm gonna be doing for this semester, we're actually gonna be using Unreal Engine to make like a little video game dungeon stuff, which I'm really excited for because yeah, that's so cool. Like, <laughs> like, I never thought I'd be already making video games and stuff like that. And I'm going to be working with some of my friends again. And uh, <laughs> I, love, I love games. I love games. So, yeah. Uh, I guess for upperclassmen, it's um, a little bit different, where in, um, instead of working on a bigger piece, you're kind of working on either pre-production for your thesis, and, th and there's big landmarks at the end of the year and in, like, the middle of the year. Um, and then, I, I wouldn't know about senior year, but I guess it is just like you're finishing your thesis as like your your final or your midterm. So most mostly midterms are more or less a like a normal midterm in your first two years, and then in your later years, you're um, mostly focusing on working on your thesis as a final or a midterm. Yeah. So like midterms and finals are not really like the finals and midterms you would get in other universities. Like in this school, it's more projects-based. So very, uh, you're not really, you're not taking tests or any exams. You don't get graded based on the, the exams. Uh, we're graded based on the quality of our work and the projects that we hand in. So they are more long-term, uh, big projects that we do um, that are graded based on how we do on them. Uh, the same thing also does go with our humanities, where because we are an art school and our teachers understand that we are visual artists, you know, that's the entire brand of the school, um, that we are often going to have a lot of project-based stuff. So in my latest humanity, we had a entire thing where we had to make a graphic over a legal case, which take the artist rights class. If you're ever around it, it's so helpful, please. Like, it's one of the best things ever. But we still had to make a lot of infographics and art pieces for it. So. We had to present on that stuff, but it's still like very project based. It's just a matter of managing your time, prioritizing which midterms are going to mean and do the most for you. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, definitely in senior year, it's like we didn't really have that midterms. I think our midterm was kind of like points in the pipeline that we had to make sure we're done. Like we had a proof of concept, and then obviously the final is the final film. 
Uh, but yeah, there are definitely midterms in other classes. And as Lucy said, it's, it is very project-based. Um, they're kind of just like a buildup of from the beginning of the semester to the middle semester and then end of semester. Um, of course, there's also participation points and your homework that also goes into your grade as well. So, yeah. Um, I, I had a question. Um, so internships really interest me um, when it comes to animation. Um, earlier, I had a chance to go talk to like the inter internships booth and they, do you, does 3D animation do internships out of the US? Uh, so I can answer that uh, to some degree. I just applied for two internship positions in France. We have a couple that are in Canada, a couple that are in France. I know of a few that are in Italy. Some of them are not explicitly proposed on our main site, but you can find connections to them. Like specifically, I applied to Illumination Paris. So we do offer a lot of different opportunities or internships explicitly outside the country. Yeah, I know there was a senior last year who did an internship at Micros that was at Paris, France. So it's definitely like, you're not, it's not like you're not allowed to do it. Definitely like wherever you wanna go, there will be support to do that. There's nothing stopping you, so yeah. And to go with that, uh, if you check, like if you ever get through your SVA in um, email, we send out like a lot of internship uh, opportunities that you can always apply to throughout the year. Um, check our websites, all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of internship like opportunities that for 3D, we have our specific uh, newsletter that you can just check and see if it applies for you. Yeah, in our uh, in third year, you will take a class called least perfect. Professional practices, I think that's what it's called, uh, where we, where the school department brings different professionals uh, in and outside of this country, where we can form direct connections and network with them. So you will definitely have opportunities where you will uh, be able to form connections or apply to international internships for sure through our school. Yeah. What they said. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I just have some questions about the honors program. Uh, I try to like look on the website, but I just want to know more details about like what you're doing in the program, like what classes you take and like the benefits of being in the program. Right, um, so honors program offer classes that are outside of our major. So we take a lot of philosophical classes, sociolo sociology, like politics, um, hu just humanities in general and it, uh, those classes are there to help you become a better rounded student. And they're all seminary based, so a lot of discussions, debates. Uh, uh, yeah, so they're very much uh, academic focus, uh, a lot of readings. And on your third year, they send you off to a free international uh, trip for being done and succe successfully being done with the honors program. So that is a great opportunity. I recommend every one of you to look into the honors program um, and join it if you can, because it's not just your technical skills that be, uh, help you make, become a better artist, it's also the knowledge and uh, knowledge, over, overarching knowledge of the arts uh, and literature and humanities that help you become a better thinker and therefore a better artist, I think. So I'm glad, I hope you join it. Uh, um, so have any of you ever considered working like small time as opposed to going to major studios? And in that case, would you say that SBA is worth it as like going to it as a school if you've ever considered working small time? Yeah, I think it's still worth it for sure. I mean, I think especially when you come in, I was very much like, wow, I wanna go to Pixar and Disney and these bigger studios, I have to go there. But I think there is like so many good things from like smaller studios. Like there's so many studios here in New York and all around the world. And I think there is just also, you know, those smaller studios are also just as hard to get into yeah. the big ones. Um, and I actually like have kind of leaned more towards 
the smaller studios because when you're in a smaller studio, you have more agency and they you kind of have more ability to talk and get to know the people around you and get to know your team and they get to know you and you're able to kind of move up from there more easily. Um, and I think SVA does really help you with that because a lot of the professors are adjunct from those studios as well. So I think just getting an education from here to get into any type of workplace, even for freelance as well, I think the school is definitely worth it for that. There is also, um, it, right now in the industry, a lot of the things that I've noticed with the internships is that for explicitly the bigger studios, a lot of roles right now are production-based or marketing-based. And I have done the research by going to the end credits of some of my favorite movies and looking through the studios that they've outsourced to, which tend to be the smaller studios, and looking into those and finding, oh, they actually do the animation. That's where I'm going. And from a stop-motion perspective, most of the stuff I'm going for is indie. I don't have a choice. <laughs> but that kind of stuff, a lot of people overlook the littler studios and just how much work they do. So coming to SVA and being able to say, oh, it isn't the big studio doing all of this. We have internships for the little guys. We have these connections to the little guys. That is so incredibly valuable. And then just you also want the connections at the bigger studios. You want to know those people because as big as this industry seems, it is a very small industry. So even bigger guys to littler guys, you're still going to want those connections and still going to want these uh, want to meet these people through SVA. Um, how much experience did you guys have in the field like prior to starting at SVA? None. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> I remember I literally asked that to when I came to tour. I was like Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't even, like, I think my, even my emailing abilities was kind of <laughs> suspicious <laughs> before I came to this major. Like, I hated computers. I was very, like, fine art based. I just did not, was not a technology based person at all whatsoever. So that really scared me because this major is very, like, computer based. But I think that's a great thing. Like, don't let it scare you because a lot of people are in the same boat. There are some people who know a bit more, but that's all right because they'll help you at a student level so you can understand the way they understand. Um, and it's also nice because I think somebody told me was like, well, that's great because now they can teach you from a blank slate so you can learn things the correct way. So no fear. Yeah, definitely. Michelle? You did so good. That's so cool. Um, but uh, for me personally, I went to a school where I already kind of learned the basics of 3D animation and all that kind of stuff um, back in Jersey. So I kind of already knew some things about it. I, I've done little animations before and all that kind of stuff. But even with that, I feel like ever since I came here, my skills went from like, okay, I'm going to say it was like right here. And I feel like it's like, where are you right now? And I don't know. I just feel like coming here, I've just been able to like, really craft the skills that I learned by myself and like kind of through my school and really like put it into like a fine detail and all that kind of stuff. And with that and like kind of knowing things be like before or like before basically, uh, I've been able like to help my peers with whatever they need to do and like need to know and all that kind of stuff. And I just saw how fast my peers have learned. Like a lot of them for the first time, this was maybe the first time they've even really touched like Maya. And I see them now as we're like all in the same boat and I'm just like, what happened? Why, why, are, why are you on my level? <laughs> it hurt, but it's honestly really amazing because I don't know, it, I love being able to collaborate with them and we all speak on the same level no matter where we came from. So I think it's awesome. I would also say uh, don't be too hard on yourself too uh, when you're starting off because uh, I vividly remember having to do a bouncing ball assignment for like my first assignment for an animation class and um, starting in like a 3D program it's like an entirely different plane uh, than like drawing on like 2D obviously but like really moving around the camera for this like entire 3D view and animating something in 3D is super daunting. Uh, and I remember just thinking, like, I am not doing this, man. And then, um, obviously, as time goes on, you really get into it. And uh, you, I really, really enjoy, like, the stuff that I've done and I'm working on right now. So you really, you don't have to have any prior knowledge. So I wouldn't worry. 
time for one last question. If there's a really good, I see right there in the middle, Will. Did you find yourself uh, falling out of your hobbies that you had prior to being at SVA, or did you find yourself finding new hobbies, or did you just not have the free time? I feel like a loser because my hobby was really just this. <laughs> this is kind of like the entire thing. Like ever since high school, I was like, "Yes, 3D, I can do it. I can make like Miku dance." Oh, thank you. I was like, that—that that was my whole thing. But honestly, I feel like. It really, like, with your hobbies, it really just takes, like, your own time management and all that kind of stuff. At the start of, like, just this first semester for me, I was like, okay, 3D every day, this, 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 that. And then I was just like, dang, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> so I kind of, to, like, kind of take myself out of that a little bit, I said it before, but I did join a D&D &D club. Um, but honestly, it's been really fun just having, like, that one day of the week that I just completely am just like, no homework, just going to D&D &D club. Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, honestly, having hobbies like and keeping your hobbies together just really like depends on like your own time management skills and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, you might even get more hobbies through being here because you'll learn so many different things from your other classes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I think for me, definitely, like I also thought like, man, I'm gonna lose all my hobbies. <laughs> but I think I ended up like getting more because I was like, I am sick of the screen time. I need to get <laughs> off the phone, get off the screens. So I think I like got back into reading books, like physical books, yeah. <laughs> because I was like, I need to stop looking at a screen. I used to read a lot and then I stopped because of high school, but then now I'm like, okay, I wanna read. And I was able to like pick up, like I wanted to pick up roller skating. So I think I was <laughs> able to do that, but it definitely like, because you're on that screen so much, I think it makes you put more effort to do things that don't relate to your screen, so. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, stepping away from the computer is so important. I had initially started to lose a couple of my hobbies. I had started out doing cork carving right before I got into college, and then I stepped away from it, and then stop motion made me love it again, so now every other day, right down from our building, there's a massive sculpture store. I go in there constantly to look at the marble carvings and to look at the wood carvings, and I've got a kit myself now, and it's totally helped me expand my love for different forms of art that are not going to be my career, and that's kind of where I call it a hobby, so. Also, I would say uh, give yourself some time, like once you get into college, because you're like, ooh, I'm in college now, and you have to like do all your yeah. new college stuff, so I do think for a little bit, uh, some of your old hobbies will be kind of like stifled for a second, because you're so focused on this new stuff, but I think once you get into the swing of like your classes and all these new people you're meeting, you will like, as everyone else said, slowly kind of like go back to your old hobbies. So, something like that. Nice. You all can stay right there. Um, let's say thank you to our students. Um, I'm gonna invite Will from admissions to come up to talk about what's next for us. If you didn't have a chance to ask questions, uh, students will be giving you tours of our facility. You can talk to them, ask them your questions. But I just wanted to say thank you for coming. Thanks for, uh, thanks for your interest in us. I hope to see you in the fall. Uh, we have some stickers up here on your way out if you want to grab a pack of stickers. Uh, but Will's going to tell us what, go what leaving here looks like. So let's, let's listen to Will. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, yeah, so everyone, please stay seated for now, uh, except for student ambassadors. Please stand up and go to the ends of rows. Um, and I'm going to break everybody out row by row. We are walking over to the department. There's no shuttles to go over there unless you absolutely need one. We can arrange for one. But otherwise, it's not that far. We're taking a nice walk. It's nice outside. Um, so I'm going to say first three rows.